I've always loved mud. I was going to start off with a joke about mud, but they say you shouldn't start off with a dirty joke. So instead, I'll just start by telling you guys what made me want to be here. So one day during my sophomore year of high school, it hit me. Why not build a mud hut? It would probably be inexpensive, and it would keep me busy all summer. All I needed was some help from my friends, and of course, somewhere to build it. Luckily, my good friend Elliot really liked the idea and offered his backyard for us to use. So Elliot and I did some research, gathered our friends, and started the construction of South Pasadena's first mud hut, or at least the first one in this century. Several months later, the hut is still incomplete, but it's getting there. I have some photos of the creation. So we started off by making this bamboo frame out of bamboo grown right there in Elliot's backyard. And basically, the process is you mix your materials on a tarp, and then all by hand, you build up these uh, individual horizontal layers. And so that's how you build up the walls. So you can see that's the first layer there. And you can see as we slowly add more layers. There's Elliot. This is a handcrafted window. And this is what the hut looks like today. Our decision to make the walls about a foot thick uh, really slowed down the process. And once school started again, we've had much less time to work. Uh, but regardless, we're going to finish it this summer, and it's going to be sick. <laughs> now, I'll admit, we started out as a bunch of teenage earthen architecture noobs, and the hut still isn't even finished. But through the process, we've fallen even more in love with mud. Also, we're no longer noobs. But really, there's much more significance behind mud than you might think. Not only is mud extremely fun to work with, but it also plays a deep role in our human tradition. Mud can teach us a lot about humanity, the things we share with other societies around the world, and community interaction. So today, I want to talk about mud as a material, the human history of mud, and finally, how mud can potentially help us reconnect, how it can help us with our isolation. So, mud is fascinating. It's texturally enticing and excellent for building. We've all played in it, but what is it? Well, it's dirt and water. When you mix these two things just right, you get this doughy, squishy material, perfect for making doro dangos, Japanese mud balls made from very fine soil that, when they dry out, become these perfectly smooth, spherical stones made of nothing but dirt. I have one right here. I've been making these since I was about, like, Nine years old, I think. But really, every consistency of mud has its charm. One of my favorite textural experiments is walking through mud at several different moisture levels as you incrementally add water, feeling how deep your feet sink in and how much it oozes through your toes. <laughs> Maybe it sounds weird, but once you try it, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> mud is also a great building material. Cob, which is a mixture of sand, dirt, clay, and hay, is what we used for the mud hut. Uh, now, let me be absolutely clear about this. Cob does not melt away in the rain. It's been used for centuries in some of the rainiest climates, such as the UK, and in some of the driest climates, such as New Mexico. It's also a very heavy material, which allows it to store heat or coolness over long periods of time. This is ideal because during the day, the warm rays of sun heat it up, and it stores that heat overnight for when we most need it. Although it's only about one-third as strong as a standard concrete block, with thick walls, cob is more than sturdy enough. Many cob structures have withstood centuries of weathering, such as this cottage in Dinton, UK, built in 1762. So it's easy to point out the differences in our cultures, but there's very few things that virtually all of us share. And one of those is mud construction, which makes sense. Mud is amazing. It's also everywhere. Humans have built with it for thousands of years. Virtually every culture, at one point or another, has used the earth beneath them to build. The ancient Egyptians and the Mesopotamians used it. Of course, most people first think Africa when they think of mud construction. And yes, it's been used vastly throughout Africa, but in many other places as well. It's been used throughout the Roman and the Muslim worlds. Native Americans in North and South America built with it. It was largely used in medieval Europe and imperial China. Even much of the wall of China is made of earth, along with many other historical monuments. 
In fact, over 10% of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites incorporate mud. Clearly, we're looking at a rich human tradition shared throughout the world. The World Heritage Earthen Architecture Program phrased it quite nicely. Earthen architecture is one of the most original and powerful expressions of our ability to create a built environment out of readily available resources. This ability to take what is directly around us and create the infrastructure for our communities, our societies, our dwelling spaces, this ability is intrinsically human. It is thus that societies from all over the world have developed their own traditions of building with mud. In the words of Silvio Mutal, an international consultant for the World Heritage Architecture Program, earthen architecture is the best expression of humanity's symbiotic relationship with the environment. The earth under our feet is an abundant, nearby resource almost anywhere on the planet. And it's also a natural resource that requires barely any alteration. This means that any earthen structure is going to be a raw piece of its immediately surrounding environment. See, this is how building with earth connects us to nature. You get a much more intimate interaction with the natural materials around you when you build with them, instead of just observing them or processing them to the point where they're not natural anymore. And while it connects us to nature, it also connects us to our ancestors all over the planet who've been doing it, again, for thousands of years and many of us are still doing it. Some do it out of curiosity and interest, such as my friends and I. But for most, it remains a normal part of daily life. The beautiful city of Shibam, Yemen, which still thrives today, is nicknamed the Manhattan of the Desert for its mudbrick skyscrapers that date back to the 16th century. In the majority of the industrialized, commercialized, commodified world, mud has been replaced with steel and wood and concrete. And yet, roughly 30 percent, nearly one-third of the people on this planet still live in homes made of mud. With its long-standing and rich traditions in cultures all around the world, its abundance, its practicality, and its popular use to this day, mud is intrinsic to humanity. So, if there's one thing we need more of in today's society, it's community interaction. As ecological architect Bob Tice put it, the ability to walk out your door and get your required daily dose of human interaction with people who aren't part of your nuclear family is absolutely going unmet. We totally see this here in the US, especially in Los Angeles, where you get from point A to point B in the confines of our cars. Mark Lakeman, an urban designer from Portland, discusses this issue of isolation in his talk at TEDx Santa Cruz. I'd like to read one of his quotes that I think uh, really illustrates the problem. None of the people who have ever lived on this street have ever said, for instance, hey, let's move the functions of living away from the functions of working. So when we come home at the end of the day, after working with people that we don't tend to get to know, let's live among people that we don't tend to get to know. <laughs> we are losing our connection to the people around us and the places we live which is simply because of the way in which our societies are set up. With our current infrastructure, our lives rarely cross paths. Lakeman points out that the U.S. has the least amount of public gathering spaces of all the First World nations. Now, perhaps you're thinking, OK, well, what does this have anything to do with mud? Well, if we look back, building with mud involves connections. As I said earlier, it connects us to our human heritage and to nature. But one connection I haven't mentioned yet is the connection to the people around us. Because it's done mainly by hand and involves a lot of physical labor, building with mud requires people coming together and collaborating. This is another reason why earthen monuments are valued so much. They're some of the best expressions of human collaboration. Now, one of the best ways to combat this problem of isolation is to get involved in more collaborative projects. This is where mud comes in. I can tell you from experience that natural building is one of the best ways to collaborate. Once you get your hands and feet covered in mud, taking part in a deeply human tradition, many beautiful things start to happen. You start to laugh. You start to dance. You start having these long discussions on topics you've never thought about. 
Should we be adding four bags of sand or five? Where should we put a window? What's the meaning of life? By the end of the day, you've better acquainted yourself with the natural materials that are going into the construction, for which you've probably spent little to no money. You've spent a beautiful day outdoors. You've created a structure that represents the land around it, but also reflects better than any conventional structure the people who've created it. You've been exposed to new ideas. Still, perhaps most importantly, by the end of the day, you're that much closer to the people you've collaborated with. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that we all go off and live in our own communal mud societies, although I am down. <laughs> Nor do I think that mud is the single uh, solution to this problem of isolation. I'm simply offering natural building as one way to foster more community interaction. A great example of this is the City Repair Project, co-founded by Mark Lakeman, whose quote I read earlier. Uh, this organization improves neighborhoods by hosting events where locals come together to create their own public gathering spaces, many of which involve natural building. You see, earthen structures are excellent for this type of thing because they're very easy to create, very economical, and green. But most importantly, they embody the same human ideals of community and collaboration that are missing in our societies and that such gathering places are intended to promote. What better place is there for locals to come together and appreciate one another than one which expresses the intrinsic human tradition of ingenuity and collaboration? See, when we build with Earth, we get a taste of what it would be like if we came together to build our homes and communities instead of paying other people to do it for us. When we pause our fast-paced lives to go back to our roots, to go back to our natural element, to work face-to-face -face with other people, we are reminded of the human being's need for community. So, whether it's for public space improvement, a fun summer project, a backyard shed, or even your next home, get out there, collaborate with others, and get your hands dirty. Thank you so much.